Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to I Heart Animation. During this first week of the podcast, I'm picking out some of my favorite episodes I've made for my other podcasts, one episode for each of my co-hosts to share when their Q&A episode goes up. To finish off my series introducing you to my co-hosts, before we get into more of the series that will become a staple of the podcast in the future, I wanted to share an episode I did with my friend Eli talking about the 2019 reboot of the Looney Tunes franchise for HBO Max or Max, as they just bizarrely renamed it a couple months ago for some reason. Eli and I love television animation, so we'll be talking about more of that in the future, but I think this might have been the very first animated series we talked about on the podcast. So, I guess the first thing is, um, what overall did you think of the new Looney Tunes cartoons? Surprisingly, really well done. Like, I, I, every time I talk about it, I keep I keep telling people that it's the best iteration of those of that series of films since the cartoons in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Mm-hmm. I I think it's I said time will tell if it'll if it'll measure up because I don't think it has yet. But mm-hmm. so far, it's the it's the most promising it's ever been because no iteration of Looney Tunes or Merry Melodies have ever been as good as the ones that were made in the golden age. Mm-hmm. Until now. Until now. Yeah, I feel similar. I feel like it's really good so far. But as far as being as good as the originals, I feel like it can be hit or miss in that regard. Like some, I think, probably are. They're hilarious. And others are funny, mm-hmm. but they're not quite as funny as the old ones. Yeah, well, well, the the thing I would say is that I, oh, a lot of the old Looney Tunes cartoons were actually some of a lot of them were really good, but there was they were hit and miss too. If you look at the entire filmography, uh-huh. and and so were a lot of the episodes of Tiny Tunes and Animaniacs. Those were also hit and miss, but yeah. the ones that were good were really brilliant. So I feel like it. Continuing the legacy of the company's animation it is pretty accurate in, on the quality level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I'm just glad that we're getting more stories with these characters. Yes, absolutely. Like I, I missed seeing. You know what I? You know what I missed? I missed uh, Daffy Duck being actually acting like loony like he did in uh-huh. the old days before before he got all bitter and as Bugs' was rival i missed that yeah. that is one of my favorite things about it that they went back to the sort of tex avery ish bob clampett ish version of daffy yeah he's like actually insane now instead of being <laughs> like you said bitter <laughs> yeah insane like the best example of that is probably like a you say you watched all of these right yeah, I've watched all 10 that they have out so far. Okay, yeah, yeah. The best example of that is probably the one called Plumber's Quack, where where Porky hires Daffy Duck to be his plumber. Uh-huh. Like that's, I, I feel like that's the best example that I would give to people to show them how the, this version of Daffy is, someone, is, is a version that I really love. Yeah, I also like the one, I can't remember the name of it, but he was messing with Porky's cement porky was trying to lay a pad of cement and yeah kept messing it up yes i love that that was a good one that one was called wet cement okay yeah so what do you think overall of like the art style um the, the art style it i i really liked it it was it was really cartoony Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what I liked about it because it needs to be cartoony in order for the those the reason why those cartoons were so funny was because of partly because of how wild they were the, 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 in in terms of the art style too because the art sometimes the drawings that the animators did was the funny was the reason why some scenes were funny mm-hmm. and I think they're doing a good job they're doing a good job here too and. It's also, it, it reminds me a little bit of how, uh, it's a little bit, of, it reminds me a little bit of Nicktoons. It's got a Nicktoons vibe to it because it's how, especially how Nicktoons used to be like in the 90s because mm-hmm. they were sort of like, they were, which is, is weird because they were, because it seems like those cartoons in the 80s and 90s are kind of evoking the golden age of animation more so than 
cartoons in the 60s and 70s, but but whenever I see modern versions of this type of wacky humor, it reminds me of 90s because those were the ones that were the best examples of evoking that. But now this reboot of cartoons from the 40s is reminding me of cartoons from the 90s now. It's sort of a weird uh, time loop. But, <laughs> but yeah, I did like that. I did like the art style a lot. Mm-hmm. What about the animation itself? Animation itself was really good. I was hoping that it would be full uh, animation like they did in the old days. It, it wasn't quite full animation. It was a lot of, there was some flash involved, mm-hmm. but I, I I didn't hold that against it because the, the most important thing about it was I felt the humor and the writing, which I thought they nailed. So it, it, that wasn't the most important thing. So I could forgive them for that. I was That was more like a personal wish. But there was some moments in the cartoons that felt you could tell they were hand drawn. It wasn't all flash. It was there was a lot of hand drawn in there, especially in the more cartoony moments because they, they needed to be more fluid in order to convey the joke and, and, and that they were trying to convey. And I thought they did a good job uh, utilizing the animation tools. Like um, it was mostly this was mostly Yowza animation was the one that animated a lot of the flash stuff. But they, I still thought they did a good job because their cartoons were really funny. I didn't really notice a whole lot of shortcuts that, like using Flash. To me, it looked mostly hand-drawn. And I feel like a lot of people were criticizing it at the very beginning because they were saying that it's not really hand-drawn because they're drawing it on tablets. But like they're still using their hands. It's just because it's not on paper doesn't mean it's not hand-drawn. And I think they did a really good job of blending it so that you barely could tell when they were taking any shortcuts. Yeah. And even if you could tell that it was being drawn on a tablet, like they say, like it, you, it, the drawings were still really good and the, and the art style was still really good. And I felt like that that sort of saved it from the mercy of my criticism because it, mm-hmm. that stuff worked so well. And in the end, there was a lot of funny animation in it. Like, just, like no matter what the technique was, it was just hilarious regardless. Well, digital art has come such a long way that you can do fully digital art and have it still be hand-drawn and even look like it was drawn on paper, but it's still drawn on the computer. And I've, I feel like if someone's able to do that and make it look great, then I don't think I don't think we should be criticizing them for not using paper and pencils. I think that the, yeah. they did a really good job on this show. Yeah, I totally agree. What did you think of the music? No, the music, yeah. Oh, the music was good. The music was fine. It was like, it was, you could tell that the person who composed the music was very, it was trying to evoke the, the mm-hmm. feeling of the old cartoons from Carl Stalling. And, and he yeah. did a good job with that because there was some Carl Stalling-ish touches mm-hmm. in the new cartoons you could a lot of times Carl Stalling like the sample from actual songs and there were some moments in this where that happened and that with that I liked because there was some familiar some familiarity with the old mm-hmm. series that that made me fall in love with it even more even though it's a, it's a nostalgia trap but it, it works on me yeah I thought the music was great. I think that they did a really good job of making it feel like the old cartoons. And I'm not sure if they did, I'm not sure if they had a full orchestra or not, but it certainly sounded like it. And if they were mixing it on computers and they weren't using a full orchestra, they did a really good job of making it sound like it was a full orchestra because to me, it sounded almost exactly like old cartoons. Just, I loved the music that they were using. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I also agree with you that if the, whether it was on a full orchestra or computer synthesis, synthesizers, like I, it doesn't matter because it, it sounded really amazing. Mm-hmm. So in the past decade, there have been two pretty notable attempts at rebooting the Looney Tunes. And we had first the Looney Tunes show back, I think it was in 2010. So. 10 years ago now. And then we had Wabbit, which became the new Looney Tunes. 
Did you watch those shows? And how, if so, how do you think they compare to this new iteration? My, my opinion about the Looney Tunes show that came on Cartoon Network, uh, it, it, I, I don't criticize it as much as other people do because a lot of people didn't like that show because they thought it was not keeping in the spirit of the old cartoons because it was like, it felt like, okay, this is Bugs and Daffy living in an apartment it's, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a Seinfeld meets Looney Tunes thing, and it was like a, a sitcom. And and for for what it was attempting to do, it actually worked pretty well because if you watch the show with no bias whatsoever, and just then it's a pretty funny show actually. But mm-hmm. it's not very satisfying if you're trying to look for something that evokes the spirit of the classic cartoon so in that regard it's definitely not as good as the new cartoon and and as for wabbit i i that was sort of more of an attempt to evoke the spirit of the old cartoons but it was it it, it felt too much like a hard reboot it didn't feel like the actual cartoons it felt more like a like a ordinary cartoon network show like like the kinds of shows that they had at the time like it's not like regular show or like the amazing gumball or whatever it was called. It was it just felt more like that, and not enough like the older cartoons, which was the, which is what I didn't like about it. I remember watching it and not liking it because I was hoping it was going to be more like Looney Tunes, but it mm-hmm. but it felt more like just an average Cartoon Network comedy, which I didn't like. Yeah, I was not a fan of Wabbit either. I haven't watched it since it became the new Looney Tunes, so I don't actually know if it improved at all. It just felt like they were trying way too hard to modernize the Looney Tunes. Like, it didn't even yeah. really feel like the Looney Tunes. It, like, it was the Looney Tunes in name only, almost. It was weird. Like, by all accounts, I should have liked it, but I just could not get into it. Like, I watched it, and kept watching it, hoping it would get better, and it never did. So I eventually just stopped watching it. And then yeah. with the Looney Tunes show, I feel like I'm in the minority because I absolutely loved that show. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, it did have yeah. a few stinker episodes. There were some episodes I just didn't like. But for the most part, I loved that show. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was really well written. And yeah, it didn't feel like the classic Looney Tunes cartoons, but I don't think it was really meant to. It was supposed to be a new take on them. It was supposed to be taking these classic characters and putting them in a sitcom setting. That was the point. It was a totally new take on them, and I thought that they did a great job with it. Plus, I loved their take on Lola Bunny. I know a lot of people like to complain about her, but I thought she was hilarious. She was one of my favorite parts of the show. She was just insane in the best way. And I thought it was so great that they had Kristen Wiig playing her. And she did an amazing job. I just, I loved this version of Lola Bunny. Yeah, I I love Kristen Wiig. And I also, I didn't mind Lola Bunny. She was a fine character. And like, and, and like I said before, the show is not bad. So I kind of agree with you. It was, it was what it attempted to be it did a good job and and i've watched a few episodes of it and it and they, i laughed watching it so mm-hmm. i think i so i apparently i think it's funny so i can't really complain about it it was it was a good show i'm kind of hoping that they find a way to bring lola back for this new series like i know it's it wouldn't be like completely in the spirit of the old cartoons if they have a new character but like I just want more of Kristen Wiig's Lola. She was just so funny. I just, I, I miss her weirdness. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, what they might do that people might approve of is uh, keep Lola Bunny out of the new Looney Tunes cartoons and give her her own show instead. I'd be down for that. <laughs> you would, you would, you, that would get your stamp of approval. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's something that you might go like ask the higher ups about if you're if you're in the business that could work. Yeah, I mean that's like the perfect compromise. If she can't be in this show, just give her something else to do. 
and I have a feeling that she'll be in the new Space Jam movie, but I'm sure they're going to go back to the uh, sultry version that she came in with in Space Jam. She was basically their yeah. eye candy for bugs, and she wasn't loony enough for me, I guess. I thought she, I did like her, but I just, I like the loony, crazy version so much more than the uh, hot version. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah yeah it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with her because I'm gonna watch that movie definitely and and yeah. and they're gonna have to address her in some way if she, whether she's in it or not so I just like I just want to see how they're gonna handle that yeah definitely so we've talked about a lot of what we liked about the show was there anything about it that you didn't like hmm. let me see I. You know, I, I I can't. I'm gonna be honest. I can't think of anything that I would that's really worth complaining about. It's like I thought it was pretty well done. I, but the only thing I would say if I had to think of something that I didn't like was probably just the fact that it's sort of. You could tell that the people behind these cartoons were were trying to were trying to make the cartoons as much like the old cartoons as possible. That was kind of the point. They wanted to bring back the looniness mm -hmm. in Looney Tunes because Looney Tunes, a lot of Looney Tunes weren't as loony as they used to be. The only negative thing I could think of if I try to find something bad about it is just that if you compare it to the old cartoons, it, it just suffers in comparison just slightly. Because mm -hmm. I don't like, because I don't like comparing it to them because I like to just judge things as if they're the only things that exist in the universe. I just want to put myself full focus on this thing I'm watching and not compare it to anything else. Mm -hmm. But but if but if I had to think of something negative, it would be that the hit and miss ratio is more miss than hit in the way that the old cartoons were more hit than miss. I think I get that. I think my one complaint i guess it would be is sort of in that vein of having them trying to capture how loony the old ones are and i feel like in certain episodes and i haven't gone to check and see who the directors are to see if it's one specific director's fault or not but i feel like occasionally they kind of overcorrect and they're too i guess maybe just too violent like, the old Looney Tunes cartoons were definitely violent, but yeah. this there was a few instances where it just felt like they went farther than the old cartoons ever would go, specifically uh, I think in I... terms of, like, exposed skeletons of characters. And oh, point, I know like, what you're talking about. Yosemite Sam's skin gets ripped off. Stuff like that. Uh, and yeah. it's always, like, oh, great, yeah. but enough that it was, like, it didn't feel like Looney Tunes anymore, just for that split second. I see what you're talking about, actually. I, I, yeah, I forgot about that. There's, there are some moments where I think, okay, yeah, the exposed skeleton is, is the kind of thing that, it, that's definitely the kind of thing that they wouldn't have done in the old days, I don't think. That's, I, but it seems more like something out of like uh, the Ren and Stimpy cartoon or something. Yeah. That's what it felt kind of like. And so I could see why that might be, be sort of off-putting but uh, yeah yeah that didn't bother me too much because a lot of the humor in those cartoons that don't seem like the kind of thing that would they would do in the old days still amused me enough where i was mm -hmm. like well this is this isn't the kind of thing they do but this is still kind of funny like like to me so like i'll forgive them for that because it's like they, I, I like i kind of i kind of like how they are going um I don't know. You might disagree with this, but I kind of like how they how they are trying to do something more than what they used to do in the old days. They're trying to top themselves a little bit. That's what I think they're trying to do. I think the reason it stood out to me as more of a negative is because I'm thinking about how I would have thought about this as a kid, and I'm fairly certain that I would have been really disturbed <laughs> as a child. If I'd say that. <laughs> Like, I didn't watch things like Ren and Stimpy, and if I ever did, it creeped me out when something like that would happen. It just, I was really uh, disturbed, and I feel like, and I know not all kids are like me, so most kids are probably fine with this, but 
for me, I feel like I would have a harder time showing a little kid these cartoons as opposed to the old ones, just because I know how I would have felt as a kid watching something like that. But yeah. for the most part, those were I think there was like maybe three cartoons out of thirty. I like I think there was usually three in each episode. So it's a very yeah. small ratio of ones that I would have a harder time showing to a kid. But overall, it that wasn't a huge issue. It was just occasionally that something like that would come up. Yeah, well, I, I do I do understand what you're saying because a, 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 a lot of times if you compare modern cartoons to classic cartoons, there are inevitably going to be differences that you just can't do anything about because the mm-hmm. tastes of audiences have just changed so drastically from the from the tastes of audiences in the like the 1930s. So mm-hmm. some things are just going to occur to us now that they wouldn't that wouldn't have occurred to us then, and some things that they did in the old days are not going to be as appealing to us now. Just 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 because that's how history works. So mm-hmm. it's I that's something I've noticed even even before I started watching the series, I've noticed that that's a dynamic between modern and classic cartoons that could get in the way of a potential reboot, which is something that I usually always wish would happen with classic cartoons, that they would go back to that style. But I always thought, it's, well, if they did, it's probably not going to be as good because there are just, just for the fact that it's being made in 2019 or 2020, it's just going to inevitably come with some some skeletons being exposed to like (laughs) that kind of humor yeah so just thinking back of the show as a whole what are some of the things that were like your absolute favorites like either episodes or treatments of characters or just anything that really stands out as like something that you really really liked about the new cartoons I have a I have the perfect answer for this because I I thought about this before. The thing that stood out for me was the cartoon about Sam Heat Dog and Ralph Wolf. Yeah. Yes, that yeah that cartoon uh, was one of the things that really made me love the new version because I this is the first time I was really excited watching that because this was the first time I had ever seen a new cartoon starring those characters yeah. that Heat Dog and that Wolf since Chuck Jones made those cartoons. And and this one in the new Looney Tunes uh, cartoons was just as funny as the mm-hmm. old cartoons were. And I was laughing just as much as I did watching the Chuck Jones versions. And I thought they did a really good job making those characters feel like how they always have felt. So that was a particular standout moment for me because those, especially since those characters are so obscure next to the bigger characters like Bugs yeah. and Daffy and the fact that they're bringing them back and putting as just as much care into making them feel like how they used to as they are to the other characters was one of my favorite things about the first season. Mm-hmm. That's something that I really liked about the Looney Tunes show was how many obscure characters that they got to come back or brought back for an episode or had as background characters. They they had one episode just focused on Cecil Turtle, a very obscure Looney Tune, and you you never see him anymore. So I'm I was really excited to see that they were going to continue that with this bringing back more obscure characters. And I really did like yeah. that, that cartoon. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, and 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 even even uh, you and you remember the one with Deaky Buzzard in it, right? Yeah, yeah, even yeah, even that one was sort of gave me the same feeling because Deaky Buzzard is another character I never saw anyone pay any attention to or mm-hmm. or, or try to make a cartoon about it that felt like the old cartoons. And it, they even had Deaky Buzzard's mom. It was in mm-hmm. this, and and she is someone who they've completely ignored since like the forties. Yeah, I just loved seeing more obscure characters, and I really hope that continues. I have yeah. a feeling that it will because this is only, I guess, the tip of the iceberg. Because I know that they had commissioned like two hundred hours worth of content from these different animators, yeah. so I really hope more attention is paid to some of the more obscure characters. 
Yeah, I, I I think there's going to be a lot because I've heard rumors about like the the the, the gremlin from the falling hair like cartoon that okay. was tormenting bugs. I heard I heard rumors that that guy was going to come back. I heard uh, like I think Hubie and Birdie are going to come back, and probably like the Abominable Snowman. I think they, I think they're really going to like try to bring all the obscure ones back. That's good. Yeah, yeah. that's one thing that. I really want to see more of is just more characters that we haven't seen in a while. And I guess more, some of the more, even you would think that they're kind of main characters, but they're, they're not really main characters. Like I was surprised that there were no Taz cartoons. I was just waiting for a Tasmanian devil cartoon and there wasn't one. Yeah. Yeah. Because Taz is so popular. Yeah. Yeah. And I know he didn't have that many cartoons in the old days, but I feel like with the new series, you it, you can rectify that. Give him more to do. And I was really hoping for yeah. that, and I never saw him. <laughs> you know what? I hope they do, I, because I do love that character. I I feel like, he, if you remember the old cartoons, Taz was only in like a maybe like five or six of them. Yeah. And like, so, so I feel like this is a good opportunity for them to rectify that because they have a lot of comedic potential with that character if they utilize it again. Yeah, definitely. Foghorn and Leghorn never showed up, which was kind of disappointing. That's true, yeah. You talk about Taz, I'm talking about Foghorn, and I want, yeah. I want to see him show up. So that's, that's the biggest surprise for me when I was watching this. I wasn't expecting to see Gossamer and mm-hmm. Dr. Frankenbeans yeah. like, show up. That was a great one. Yeah, yeah, that was a great one with Bugs was trying to watch baseball and he was trying to borrow the cable from his neighbor, which happened to be a mad scientist. But that was really brilliant. Yeah, I yeah, like so, how yeah. they took old formats like that. Like, they took them in ways that felt fresh. I was kind of afraid that a lot of these were going to feel like they were treading on the same ground. And sometimes they kind of did, but then they would take it in a new direction. Like there was one of the Roadrunner Wiley e. Coyote ones where they had the same gag that I don't know if it's in more, more than one old cartoon or if I just watched it a whole lot as a kid, but Wiley e. would paint a scene on a rock to try and get the Roadrunner to smash into it. But the Roadrunner would run through it like it was real. And then Wiley would try to follow him and he'd crash into the rock. And they started yeah. doing that. And then I, I was like, okay, if this, they don't need to really do this again. But then yeah. they, they turned the tables on me. They subverted my expectations by having Wiley was able to follow him into the rock. But then he gets yeah. stuck in the rock. <laughs> I yeah. loved that. I did not see that coming. And there was a, yeah. there were more, more moments like that where they – they feel like they're going to tread the same ground and then they do something different. And I really appreciated that. I agree with you. I, I noticed that the, the, the Wiley e. Coyote moment was particularly really funny because I didn't see that coming either. And it was completely a new direction for that kind of gag, which you, which I was seeing a lot. And, but, and I, and also I agree with you. I noticed that that was happening throughout the entire season because I was like, there were moments that felt familiar, like, like moments when like Bug Bunny was about to say, of course, you know, this means, but instead of saying war, he said, you know, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm going to say. Like, it was like that, that kind of thing. There was a lot of that. It was like, it felt like they, they, the cartoons were made for people who are fans already. And so they were trying to make them different. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it felt like. Yeah. I really appreciated that. One thing that I really liked was the level of Tweety Bird. <laughs> I Tweety's always been one of my favorite characters, and I kind of just figured that there wasn't going to be that much Tweety in these, but I was pleasantly surprised. I think we got three or four with Tweety, and they were all pretty good. The, the ice skating one was kind of, eh, I didn't really care too much about that one, but the one with the rhino in the zoo where they cast Tweety as the bird in a symbiotic relationship with the rhino instead of like the yeah. oxpeck or whatever bird it is that usually lives with the rhinos. I thought that was hilarious. That was my favorite Tweety yeah. of the season. You know what? Yeah, that was interesting because like I, I, I of all the old Looney Tunes cartoons, the Sylvester and Tweety ones were the ones that, that are the ones that usually on the least on my mind because like uh, for Chris Freeling's like, like later cartoons in the 50s were, mm-hmm. were 
for me personally, they were kind of weaker, so I don't think about a lot of those. But but the Sylvester and Tweety cartoons in the new version were really good. I liked them, and I was worried I might not, but I thought they were perfectly funny. So that, so I agree with you on that. And I, I do like Sylvester and Tweety as characters if they, when they're utilized well. Mm-hmm. And I thought they were, and I thought they were in this. So I guess in wrapping up our discussion, is there anything that you can think of that you really want to see from the series going forward? Because I know there's more coming. There's a lot more coming. So is there anything you're really hoping to see in the future? That's a good question because I, because this show, as soon as I, as soon as I finished this first season, I, I was immediately depressed because I wanted to keep watching more. <laughs> that's how much, that's how much I loved this. And, mm-hmm. and so I'm, for, for now, in my, the mindset I have now where I just crave more of these cartoons, I hope that they just keep making them exactly the way that they are now i hope they just stay consistent in this Mm -hmm. in what they're doing now because i because i think that they're really brilliant right now and i want them to be just as funny going ahead hopefully even more funny that's that's my big hope and i and i hope that they don't hold back on the looniness i the, the my favorite thing about these new cartoons is that they actually feel worthy of the loony title to actually feel loony and that's the most important thing about these cartoons i feel aside from the aside from the gags is that I, it, it being funny i hope that they just keep in the spirit of what the series is about going forward and mm-hmm. the whole way yeah my i have two really specific things that i want from future episodes that i i probably was thinking about them Ever since I started watching the show, two things that I really wanted, and so far, one maybe got a little of, the other haven't gotten yet. Kind of tying back into things I was saying about the Looney Tunes show and the more obscure characters, I want more scenes or more cartoons where unrelated Looney Tunes do something together. Like... Oh, this didn't happen a whole lot in old cartoons, but you'd occasionally get something like where Granny is being wooed by Yosemite Sam. Just things like uh, that. Yeah. Two characters who don't usually share cartoons come together for a story. I, I want more of that. You got a lot of that in the Looney Tunes show. And that's one thing that I really liked about the Looney Tunes show was seeing all these different characters interacting that you normally didn't get to see interacting. And I really want more of that in the future. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a good one because I didn't think about that because I didn't think of that as a necessary thing for me. I would still be satisfied mm-hmm. if, if but without that. But if that did happen, I would be tickled by it. So yeah. I would absolutely like I would absolutely love it because it would be cool because a lot of these characters, I would like to see how they would interact with a lot of characters who they didn't normally interact with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not exactly a necessity, but it's something that I'd like high on my wish list of what I want to see. Yeah, that's a good one. And then the other big thing that I really, really want, and this one, I feel like it almost is a necessity. I want cartoons based around classical music, like maybe even no dialogue, because we had the old cartoons, you would get things like Rhapsody Rabbit and What's Opera Doc, things that are based around really specific classical pieces and then they build a story around the music. And I I was really hoping for just one, one of those in this. Uh, yeah. I didn't get it, and I really, really want it. I feel like that's almost a necessity, because that's like a staple of Looney Tunes. And I feel like oh, it would be a really big missed opportunity if they don't do that in the future. That is a good one, because I am not, aside from the fact that I'm a huge classical music fan, a lot, a lot of the, my favorite Looney Tunes cartoons are the ones that are mm-hmm. like music, uh, music where the plot is, the normal plot is a kind of strong word, but where the action is driven by music, like the uh, Rhapsody Rabbit was like that, Rhapsody and Rivets, uh, Pigs in a Polka was kind of like that. I, I the, where it just, just, just the cartoon was just sort of centered around a certain classical music piece. Mm-hmm. Those were really good, and I would also like to see that because that would really 
that would really make it feel like they were trying to bring back the spirit of those cartoons. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, I think that's all I've got. Do you have any other final thoughts that you want to say before we wrap it up? No, no, I'm good. I we've talked about it all. I could I could keep going on about it because I love talking about it, but it's I'm just going to be like gushing and it's and I'm going to sound like an idiot. <laughs> okay. Well, I think then we'll wrap that up for now. Do you want to let people know where they can find you? Yeah, if you if you want to hear more of the my opinion, if you could just you go to my Twitter. My Twitter handle is at ejunkie2014, and and then I'll guide you to my blog and all my other stuff from there because I'm most active on Twitter. So if you just want my other formats, then I'll just guide you from there. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me. We'll have to do this again sometime. This is a lot of fun. Yes. Anytime you want to talk about Looney Tunes, I will be there. Okay. Well, we'll see you next time then. All right. See you. Thanks for listening to iHeart Animation. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-hosts as well, and if you want more content from us, check out one of the other podcasts in the iHeart Movies Podcast Network, or check out my brand new Patreon. My link tree, as well as any other relevant links, will be in the description. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.